Hey everyone, today is Friday the 3rd of May 2019. This is The Gap, episode 465. We're back. We took we're a back. week off. Yep. Uh, not much happened during that week because we were very busy. And yeah. Um, yeah, we couldn't really do much. But anyway, I'm here. I'm Luke Laurie. And also joining us is Job Guroy, a.k.a. Ulrich. Ulrich. Wilkenstein. Wild Wormsteyer. We'll get to that later. We will. Uh, I am here. I'm doing great. We're fresh. We've we've just lit like literally fucking two hours ago gotten off a plane from a how long was it? Twenty something hours? Twenty ish, yeah, twenty ish hours. Yeah. So I'm feeling good. Feeling <laughs> pretty good. Uh yeah. Pretty just, hyped to be on a podcast. I'm I'm super ant, actually. I'm like, fuck yeah, can't wait to be on a podcast. Uh, because I love to do podcasts for our glorious listeners. Um, not heaps to talk about this week either, because we were pretty much locked in playing just the one game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a tiny game called Borderlands Three. Yeah. No. Not. Not a huge deal. Just you know. <laughs> The biggest news thing of the last week, Borderlands Three, uh, we we travelled to LA, courtesy of Two K, mm-hmm. uh, who did our accommodation and our flights. Uh, just get that disclaimer out of the way. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we travelled to LA to play Borderlands Three, um, and yeah, it was like a ninety minute play session. Uh, I did not get to play for ninety minutes because my like there was an interview scheduled smack bang in the middle of my fucking play session. Uh, but nevertheless, I did get to play a ton of it. You got to play a ton of it, and uh, yeah, that's about it, eh? Like playing yeah. some Borderlands Three. I don't think ninety minutes is enough time. No, not for a game like that. Play a game like Borderlands Three. I've seen today that so there's some news out. And it's like, oh, Borderlands Three is only ninety ah uh, thirty hours long. Only Main thirty. Campaign. Yeah, only 30 hours long, and uh, yeah, like fucking Jesus. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's that's, that's if you beeline through the main campaign, it'll take 30 hours. And uh, like we saw evidence of that sort of stuff in our play session because I didn't get anywhere fucking close to finishing the playthrough, like what we were supposed to be. There was a defined start and end to our play session. Uh, and I know that, you know, some of the people that we travel with and, and played with, um, they actually made it to the end. Mm. Uh, they fought the Gigamind big boss at the end of the quest line. Sure. Uh, but I know I certainly didn't come close. And I know you didn't. I did not know. And I know that anybody who basically did any side quests at all had no fucking hope of mm. making it to Gigamind. Uh, like, just flat out. Like... It'd be like, I don't know. Yeah, you could finish the Nurburgring in 30 hours, right? But if you start taking right-hand turns when you're not supposed to be, right? If you Only if you stick to the track, right? It's going to take you a lot more than 30 hours to drive all the way fucking up to Brisbane and back to Sydney and then up to Brisbane again if you take a bunch of details along the way. Um, so, yeah. There was like absolutely no chance of you making it to the end if you did any side quests. And I wasn't even doing side quests. I was literally just fucking about in world shit. Like I was looking at menu screens. Looking at menus. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Um, looking at menu screens, finding, I found like all of the vehicles that you could unlock in that PlayStation. I found them all, unlocked them at the catcher ride. Uh, like just sort of hunted through a bunch of found a bunch of extra guns and stuff in like some extremely hidden chests and stuff like yeah i was basically but that's how i play borderlands right Hmm. like i am playing those games with no stone left unturned yeah right i'm not playing them fucking bang on through so there's no way I, i reckon i probably made it the least furthest out of anyone who played that demo yeah well, right. you did run into every tree along the way in that car, so maybe that was your problem. Like I said, I think <laughs> by that point, it would still technically be called drunk driving. Yeah, right. 
Uh, not because I'd been drinking that morning, uh, mm. although they were serving alcohol that morning. They were. Uh, no, because I was still drunk from the night before, uh, which I believe finished at like 4 a.m. or some shit. Right. Uh, I, I can't confirm that. I, I, yeah, I, this is based on other people's reports because I don't remember anything. I woke up the morning of the events that we were supposed to go, you know, you know, we flew fucking 15 hours to attend. Woke up. Three minutes before I was supposed to get on the fucking bus downstairs. Yeah. Uh, already clothed. On my bed. Not in bed. On my bed. Yep. Uh, lying, like, on top of 70 fucking pillows. With a fucking bag of fried chicken next to me. <laughs> with can't no... can't skim over that. <laughs> There's no label on this chicken, so I still don't know where I got the chicken from. Uh, it's uh, like I open it up and like there's like chicken. You know how hotels always have like really white linen. Yeah. Not in my room. <laughs> no, no, the spicy sauce <laughs> made it look something like a murder scene uh, because it was all over the fucking sheets. The mm. chicken when I sort of flopped all over it in my sleep uh yeah i you know all of that so uh had some chicken obviously i mean i'm not just gonna not eat some chicken when it's just sitting there uh oh fucking charmed was on the tv because luke fucking that put... wasn't me it happened to nate as well it's an interesting Maybe you guys put the same channel on. Interesting coincidence. Uh, Maybe while... you and Nate were hanging out together and were watching Charmed, and then you went back to your room and was like, you know, I, I like to finish that episode. Finish watching Charmed. Uh, it seems unlikely. But yeah, no. was Yeah, Charmed was on. It was a bit weird. Uh, and yeah, like I had to go downstairs. I quickly changed out of my chicken-covered clothes. Yeah. Uh, popped a little shower in the can and uh, went downstairs. Oh, sorry. Also, I popped two hydrolytes, you know, those rehydrating things. Uh, tablets. Where did you get these from? I brought them with me. All right. Magic. It's just a hangover cure. Popped those uh, and chugged a bottle of hydrolyte. It was a mistake because uh, I got downstairs and promptly had to walk into the uh, hotel's lobby bathroom and bring the mayhem to their sink. Uh, I, I chunded pretty hardcore uh, straight into the sink. I, I aimed for the urinal on my second round, but uh, most of the first one went into the sink. Most of the first one. Then I, so on my way back, right, I noticed that the, the bus still wasn't leaving for the event. Uh, and I would realize that we, you know, totally didn't have to be there at, at eight o'clock or whatever the fuck we were there for. Yeah. Uh, cause we had plenty of time. So, uh, anyway, I went back, I had to go change my pants cause I got a bit of spew on them as well. And while I was going past the lobby, the desk, the front desk, I'm like, oh, hey mate. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> there's a lady. I'm pretty sure it's a lady. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I'm like, uh, hi, yeah, I, uh, I chunded in your bathroom. Anyway, and uh, they were like, what? Yeah, I chunded in your bathroom. And then I wandered off to the to go change my pants, get the chunded pants off. So uh, I went through a lot of pants all in, in one, like, 15-minute block. Come back downstairs, right as rain. Yeah. Get straight back to work. Uh jump on the bus see we thought you were talking to them about the chicken in your room ah like warning them about this chicken hey there's chicken in my room no no, no they were gonna it. find out i'll be back for it later yeah. don't touch my goddamn chicken um yeah no nah. i think they it, like just thinking back to how it looked it probably looked like i slaughtered a chicken on on my bed because it was so red. It was ridiculous. Uh, anyway, then we went to the event. So, um, and I got all, my way, event. got all my yeah. way done like the professional that I am. 
Of course. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. Everyone was there on time. On time. All the media people, right? That's what's weird about this, right? All the media had to do all of their work that next day. Yeah. Right? Uh, And we all kicked on till fucking whatever time in the morning. Which was dumb. Super dumb. Uh, Me and Nate actually front-loaded that shit. We polished off a six-pack each watching Game of Thrones and then subsequently watching um, uh, fucking The Battle of Helm's Deep, yeah, on YouTube uh, for the next 40 minutes after watching Game of Thrones because we were fucking G'd up. Uh, We polished off a six-pack before we even got to dinner. And then dinner, awesome pizza. Like, surprisingly, really, probably the best pizza I've had in L.A. Well, no, definitely the best pizza I've ever had in L.A. And, like, a top pizza that I've had in America. But, anyway, right? Then we all kicked on, right? All the media kicked on. All the streamers, right, bailed. They bailed real early, like 10 o'clock-ish. But the media kicked on, and then we had to work the next day. All the streamers, they didn't have to work. They got the day off. Like, they could have they could have kicked on, partied hardy, but no, they didn't have it in them. They did not have it in Some them. Some of them came back. Did they? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> they reminded us. Ah, uh, uh, right, yeah. yeah. I don't remember that either. Um, yeah. We, um, and then we went and did all our work. Yeah, did our work. And so uh, I made it the least far of anyone in the demo, but only because I was exploring. Um, um, let's talk about the event though, like overall, yep. the layout of it. I have not been to an event set up like this before. It was insane. It was uh, extensive. <laughs> it was, it they... was crazy. Like there's been, you've done, you've done plenty of preview, sorry, review events where they yep. set up stations and whatnot. Never but been they're, they're, stations. But they're review events and they're not like decked out in, um, you know, the walls are all painted and all this sort of stuff. This was like 200 stations set up, top of the line AMD hardware. They made that known as well. AMD Ryzen and Radeon hardware. Um, on top of that, like they had seating everywhere for all the interviews there was a um, a drink station set up for for uh, beverages. Moxie's there was, Moxie's bar, Mad yeah, Moxie's, Moxie's bar. bar. And all um, the white staff were dressed like Mad Moxie, yeah. in that clown theme, which was unsettling as fuck. To be yeah. if I'm being honest, yep. Uh, uh, food stations, food so that everywhere for lunch. Yeah. Um, they or had breakfast, a, as it were. Yeah, they had a wall set up like a a, a, a chalkboard where you could write your name on this wall. It was basically in between the bathrooms. Oh, right, yeah. The bathrooms were all decked out in um, like vinyl stickers with things written on the wall. I didn't bring the paint into those bathrooms. (laughs) Well, the bathroom said it was like the best time you could have with your hands type thing, Uh, um, which I thought was very funny. I took a photo of it while there was two guys standing at the urinal next to me. Classy. (laughs) I'm like, it's all right. I'm not, I'm just, I'm taking photos of the wall. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I'm taking um, a picture of my dick. Yeah, and then at the front of the the uh, the hall, because it was a giant hall they were in, they mm. had a um, like a bunch of seating there and a giant screen. And then next to that was this like ten foot um, statue of two of the villains from Borderlands Three, which were they looked amazing. This, this statue they had there, they clearly That's spent sweet. a lot of money on this. Um, yep. yeah man and just like it, it was a very e- expensive looking um, setup, and they, they've d- done it really well like it seemed to the only place I've ever seen anything quite like it yeah like with that many computers with that sort of like art that kind of stuff is BlizzCon like that's 100% what like if if they'd had like crazy elaborate cosplay and a 45 minute line for the men's bathroom it would have been 100 percent blizzcon uh that's like that's literally the only place i've ever seen anything like it and yeah like it was quite impressive for a two-day event yeah so it's a two-day uh, well, event to cover 800 people yeah basically 800 media and streamers yeah which is loony 
Yeah. It's a lot of people. Um, I've never seen an event on that scale either. Like 800 is. Yeah. When I heard the number, I was like, that is, that's a lot of people. Um, obviously they split it up into different sections over, across two days. We were the very, we, we were the very first ones to jump in there and, uh, and see it all. This was before the, the embargo. Um, so they, they did like a live stream mm. on, on, um, on the actual day where like they did the presentation and then once the presentation was done, a bunch of streamers then jumped in and started streaming the game. But, but we came in the day before um and we saw the first presentation and then that's when we got our hands-on session with the game um, yeah but yeah in terms of like an event like that i've not i've not experienced anything uh like that sort of setup before on that scale yeah. it, yep. it was pretty impressive so yeah uh with that said um mm -hmm. it was sponsored by xbox and it was entirely on pcs but they insisted that we play with using an Xbox controller, and I was not thrilled about that because it's a first-person shooter, and while I can play shooters on controller, I very much prefer to use a mouse and keyboard, uh, and yeah, hmm. just weren't allowed to. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was a bit weird. Um, yeah, the like sponsorship stuff was a bit weird. Uh, they did a keynote a presentation at the start that was an hour long, uh and took us through the the very start of the game the very start of the game but also like fully explained the tutorial and stuff and i just didn't think they needed to do that i don't know why they would do that uh, well i think the main reason behind that was to show that there was now vaulting you could do that by game. showing that there was vaulting and crouching and sliding <laughs> like you yeah. did not need to go through the tutorial of the game uh to me it's it's seemed more like they uh maybe weren't ready to show off anywhere else in the game like they were trying real hard to restrict what we saw to quite early in the game because we got to see what shiv right the shiv fights uh and then uh motor mouth or whatever the fuck his name is mega mouth um the second fight the second yep. mini boss, boss fight mini boss fight yeah um but yeah, like, and obviously in the playable demo, we theoretically would get to see Giga Mind. Uh, those were the, it felt like those, that was all they really wanted to show. Mm. And so they didn't want to just start with us running in to fight Shiv or whatever. Uh, I guess that would have felt a bit weird. But then again, it's quite an open game, right? Like, I don't feel like, I feel like they could have just wandered around wherever they wanted. Um, and left that opening sequence to be the opening, the introduction to Borderlands 3. I just, I honestly think it, it's, yeah, showing a tutorial is a very weird way to introduce your game because it's never the most ex exciting stuff, right? Like tutorials are, are meant to be educational, not uh, fun, you know? Sure. Like I'm not saying education can't be fun, kids stay in school, <laughs> but um, yeah, like generally they are at odds with one another. You don't get to have as much fun as humanly possible until the tutorializing is finished. Look at fucking, I think the most classic example is fucking like Final Fantasy 13, right? Like the 20 hour tutorial and everyone's like, oh, once you get past that first 20 hours though, the best Final Fantasy ever. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to get past 20 hours of tutorial because it's not engaging gameplay. It's not what I want to do. Hmm. And they're like, but it's worth it. You know, it's worth it once you get there. No. Nah. Tutorials generally suck ass. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a weird way to intro it. But, yeah, they talk through all of that. They've uh, used the phrase microtransaction-y stuff, uh, which has led to um, some interesting interactions on Twitter between Gearbox's CEO Randy fucking Pitchford uh, and Game yeah. Informer yeah. and a bunch of Twitter trolls. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I fully understand both sides yeah. of that conflict, yeah. right? Because from Randy's point of view, right, he felt like he did contextualize the microtransactions that would exist in the game. Mm -hmm. And... 
if you go back and listen to it, he did, right? Like he absolutely did contextualize it, right? Game Informer's point of view is that it was in some ways confusing. Like it was said in a, in a confusing sort of way uh, mm -hmm. that they were just trying to clarify. They were just trying to clear it up, right? And so Randy obviously has had an interesting uh, relationship with the media in the last six months or so. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, went straight to the hyper defensive mm -hmm. uh, about all of the... Being called a liar. Being called a liar. But it wasn't called a liar though, right? Like, he wasn't called a liar. They were just saying he said there wouldn't be transac microtransactions. Yeah. But by take, like, he did. Right, but context is everything. In the context of what he was talking about, he was saying there wouldn't be free to play game style microtransaction y stuff. Uh, but there would still be Borderlands 2 style cosmetic yeah. microtransaction stuff. That said, there's more to that story, right? Like pr the pre order bonuses appear to convey XP. XP uh, boosters. Yeah, XP boosters and stuff, which I do think is gameplay impacting. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, I don't think that story is actually finished. Sadly, like, none of my interviews, uh, like, my interviews weren't at appropriate times to ask about that stuff. And uh, I believe... Or with the right people. Well, yeah, I was talking to an art director, uh, the art director, and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Enemy lead enemy designer. Um, yeah, like that. They've got it's got, got nothing to do with them at the end of the day, uh, and it would just take away from the amount of time you only get fifteen minutes with them. So, mm. well, you already know the answer to the question is going to be either I don't know anything about that or I can't talk about that. Uh, I tend to skip it. Um, yeah. It's a tricky one. It's a very tricky one because. I like. I think selling cosmetics for Borderlands makes sense to me, so, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a co-op game, and people want to show off their co-op player, player character, um, and you know, customize them with emotes and dances or whatever the fuck. Uh, obviously, as always, I don't get into any of that shit, but people yeah. do. Yeah. Sure, uh, but. Yeah, gameplay related stuff shouldn't exist. Which uh, it seems like it does have it. But maybe they're just not selling it. Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. this is gonna come back and bite him in the ass. Absolutely. Yeah. If if they're not selling it, then I think he remains technically correct. But they are selling it in terms of it being a pre order bonus. Yeah. Like you're still paying for this. But... That's what it is, right? That's why Game Informer has a really good fucking like place that to to stand on you know that to, to put this piece out because uh, one of the things that st stood out to me was randy said in a tweet that nobody like the you know the game informer dude wasn't in the audience and nobody in the audience needed further clarification which is not true which is flat out yeah flat out not the case because i was literally sitting next to nathan uh uh, and I'm like, did he just say there aren't no, microtransactions? Yeah, did he? Just... And we like, and we... we finished the event, and we were talking about it. Or... That discussion carried on like yeah. for fucking hours, right? Yeah. Like, we were all quite confused as to how that shit played out, and we couldn't get a a decent answer because I suppose everyone working the event was quite busy working the event yeah. um yeah so yeah I, I don't think they were out of line at all yeah because the thing was that like uh like we know that the original borderlands or at least i did had all this cosmetic dlc and then they were showing off things during that presentation being like hey here's all the different emotes and skins yeah and yeah blah, blah blah and then he's on stage saying there's no microtransactions i'm like oh that's a pretty big deal like okay fair enough and then later on, I'm hearing, like, while the event is going on, because it's something we were all talking about, going, that's pretty strange. I would have thought yeah. that would be something they'd do. 
then I'm hearing like, no, no, there's actually skins and things you can buy. And that's when the confusion started because I'm like, but he said like on stage that there weren't going to be any. Yeah. Um, you had to go back yeah. and listen. Oh, I had to go back and listen to my recording of the presentation yeah. to work out the context, right? Right. Uh, to find the context of what he said. Uh, and yeah, in the context of what he said, not including these XP boosters, he is correct. Like, yeah. and if they sold, I guess if they sold XP boosters in Borderlands 2, then he remains correct. But he is like, it's shaky, right? It's shaky because yeah. I do feel like, yeah, anything gameplay impacting does stray towards the free to play style microtransaction. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a tricky one. It's a very were, tricky one. There were, in, in Borderlands 2, they were called, I think there were artifacts you could get. Right. There was something like, like these orbs you could get and they would give you bonuses. And I remember there being like extra experience or like added bonus loot or something like that. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they sold them, but I remember them being in the game, like a part of the game. And I don't know. I vaguely really remember similar. that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what's what's basically happened, I think, is because we were super confused, and then the next day I watched the live stream on the proper thing, and he said again, like mm. he made it a lot clearer this time by saying like there's going to be no micro transactions. Right. But what's what's going on is um, he's sort of looking at it differently. Like Borderlands Two came out in two thousand and was it two thousand um, oh, really? and twelve? Fuck really? Yeah, I think it's two thousand twelve. Jeez. And uh, I, I know it's, that's right because I've got some stats here from some other stuff. Um, but nice. 2012, yeah. And so back then, like microtransactions weren't really a big deal. But DLC was was in the business, right? DLC stuff. And they were selling skins as DLC add-ons as well as all their campaigns they did. This, they did some amazing campaigns in that game. Um, but it was like campaigns and skins and you go to like the Steam store and buy this added DLC. And then what's happened along the way is then microtransactions like another term for it has come along where you can buy like spend in-game currency to buy little bits and pieces whether it's cosmetic skins or XT xp boosters or, or or heroes within a game characters like um and i think he's still looking at that old school mentality which is a bit strange because i would have thought like it's not like he was they were going off a script right yeah. And so somebody along the way should have said something like, hey, this is a bit, doesn't sound 100% right. Maybe we should word it differently or yep. make it a bit clearer or something like that. Mm. And so, yeah, I think at the end of the day, he is, it, it's a bit weird because in my mentality, I do think that is classified as a microtransaction in today's standards. You are spending money to buy something. Yeah. Whether or not you want to call it DLC or a microtransaction, I think that, that's a bit blurred now. I think they're sort of the same things these yeah. days. Um, but what he was trying to say was that there's no in-game currency where you'll be buying an in-game currency to spend on gear, um, you know, buying right. Fortnite bucks or yeah. Apex coins, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think at the end of the day, there are still microtransactions in the game, technically. You're still buying skins. We've just called them something different to what they are you know, eight years ago yeah 2012 fuck like what was the the original microtransaction would have been horse armor right for for skyrim and things yeah like that. <laughs> yeah right and that was hilariously overpriced but it would have been you know it's it's the first microtransaction right and it, it was like seven bucks like i don't think yeah it's def, it's not certainly not defined by in-game currency so yeah, I think it's it's a very old school way of looking at it. I don't think it excuses his position. Someone absolutely should have read that script and like clarified it. Yeah, just just stopped it because this all of this bullshit distracts from a fucking <laughs> awesome game. Yeah. That's the fucking dumb dumbest part is that like for large sections of the the big streamer day. People weren't talking about fucking Borderlands Three, the fucking sick new loot shooter that is gonna that's gonna fucking remind Destiny and Division how a fucking loot shooter is supposed to be. <laughs> They're talking about fucking Randy Pitchford fighting the game for him for fucking two hours 
across fucking 40 fucking tweets. That was a good, like, we enjoyed that because we were at the airport it being was. like, Randy is teeing off on motherfuckers on the going ham. And then we landed, like, this morning and he was still on, <laughs> like, like, responding to just random people. Yeah, it is definitely one of those take Trump's phone away type moments. Like, yeah, maybe we could have gotten interviews with him through Twitter. Like, uh, if they weren't going to let us interview him, we should yep. just ask him questions on Twitter. We should have done that. Yep. Yeah. Damn it. Um, all right. So yeah, let's 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 talk about what's happened during this a bit more in this presentation. Or I actually go back to these numbers that, like, our relationship with Borderlands. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Um, we are extremely big Borderlands fans. You yeah. and I both had it as our game of the year for 2012. Yep. Um, and then even... Oh, sorry, Borderlands 2, that is. Obvious. And then going back before that, we um, we were part of a, a, a Borderlands charity for the first game where we raised, I think, between around $5,000. Yep. Um, we did a Borderlands 2. This was 2. very, very long ago. This was like Borderlands 1. Borderlands a, 1, yeah. We did a fucking stream back when you didn't stream on Twitch. You streamed on Justin TV or what was the other you one? Stream. You stream, yeah. And, like, we streamed on you stream um like way before anyone was doing any anything like that and yeah. we stream um, like did it was it 48 hours i think it was just over 48 hours or th- might have been three days yeah it was, it was like on friday drifting in Sunday yeah somewhere. drifting into three-day territory yeah. uh like a three-day fucking non-stop stream of borderlands with four-player uh, co-op this is yeah yeah <laughs> Like, yeah, and it was entirely four-player. Uh, it wrecked my house. It <laughs> threatened to everywhere. wreck my... my... <laughs> really brought the mayhem. Uh, um... <laughs> With the original mayhem bringers. That's it. Uh, we yeah. turned the fucking... We turned my house into, like... we. It took literally weeks to get the smell of BO out of my place. Like... We had like thirty maybe people come through that joint. Oh yeah, a lot of like, and there was a lot of booze. Different and... websites coming through and, and different personalities. Yeah, um, we had the the stream was being streamed on the Mana Bar. Yeah, at the bar itself. Uh, back when the Mana Bar was like the original fucking video game bar. Yeah. Um, yeah, which was sick. Uh, yeah. We had, at one point, Randy was in the chat room with a bunch of, of uh, Gearbox developers, and they were dropping dropping money to help support it. Legendary. Like, yeah, yeah we were all in. We're huge fans of Borderlands, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, we did that. That was, yeah, back when The Gap was just a little Bambino mm. uh, podcast, not the giant juggernaut that you see today uh, with its massive sponsorships and... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's all that. Light button. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's it's we've we've and we did another one. We were well, we participated in another one uh, for Borderlands Two when it came out. Um, yeah. For Raw DLC, uh, which was Nathan's original podcast, uh, and Dave Kaziki and Josh Philpot, and they jumped in and did uh, did a Borderlands Two stream i it might still be up if you want to go see me call dave kaziki a cunt you should definitely find that stream <laughs> it's there somewhere because i fucking flipped out at him at one point uh which was pretty entertaining to be honest uh it was just for it was for the kids you know i was doing it for the kids um i think that one uh, like raised even more money which is sick and yeah i mean every time i talk about loot shooters i bring up borderlands where yeah we're about that life i did the borderlands 2 preview as well did you yeah i, I went overseas to gearbox to to for the reveal for, was it for the reveal can't remember if it was for the reveal or, or it was just a normal preview but yeah right yeah studio tour yeah like yeah we've been been yeah. around it's we've yeah it, we've definitely been playing this game since the get-go and uh it's interesting to see how far it has come for Borderlands 3 and how true to itself it stayed. In my preview on Red Bull, I wrote about how the interesting thing about the arts of Borderlands was that they used cell shading originally yeah. to sort of fuzzy 
uh, textures. People. Yeah, you can't tell that they're using low res textures because the graphic, uh, the comic book sort of art style, the cell shading, uh, allows them to get away with you know focusing their definition on certain areas, and it like the eye sort of slips over mm -hmm. uh, other things. Uh, but that's not the case in Borderlands Three. They're going fucking full blown like it's it's in 4k it's running 60 frames a second and uh all of the textures like there's detail fucking everywhere now like fucking tons of detail even the, like uh, the the like grass swaying yeah like, that used to like remember that used to be just like a static <laughs> when there was grass at all <laughs> yeah like the, just the, be like a the tuft of three like front fronds of grass like just fucking standing up and dead static and clearly a sprite uh, out of the 16 square kilometers of fucking red desert that was Pandora and Borderlands 1. Um, yeah, now it's, yeah, now it's this grass everywhere. It's moving and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it's like, it's clear that they're utilizing the full extent of the technology uh, and they've, they've gone a long way into like keeping the same, keeping the Borderlands aesthetic but bringing it into the now, the 2010s. Yeah, yeah. eight years uh, ago. Yeah, 2019 or whatever the eight fuck, years. yeah. Seven, seven. I, I don't know, I didn't do much. Fucking, that, no, he clearly didn't. Uh, I also just got off a long plane, so. A long plane. Or plane flight? No, just a long plane. No, just plane. Yeah, it's just a really Planes, long plane. actually. Um, yeah, uh, like that, that alone is some shit in my opinion like it's it's such a staggering uh and easy to miss detail about the way that borderlands 3 has transitioned from two to three you know like yeah. it's not just a higher resolution thing and there's the attention to detail is there on every single fucking level which is awesome um and you look at it and you're like oh yeah i remember this place yeah it's brown <laughs> lean that this rocks this the tutorial bit it was very it was very pandora but then they take us to promethea and uh because it's border worlds yeah it's border worlds this, this was, was a rumor back when game arena was around i remember this article it absolutely was yeah um and yeah you are going to different fucking planets the vault hunting no longer is no longer contained to pandora you now go to different planets to, to find vaults um and i think this the, is part of the story in, was it two or pre-sequel i can't remember but then uh, like oh there's different vaults around yeah it was definitely in pre-sequel i'm pretty sure it was very very heavily into at at the end of um uh, two right okay um but yeah I, I don't super remember um so yeah but like when you're on Prometheus, i don't know if you spent any time looking up uh i i did i spent a lot of time looking up but you could see um like the the city because it's it's the base the home planet for atlas uh which is obviously they, they made the best guns or traditionally have made the best guns in borderlands um and their home planet of promethea is under attack uh from the malawan corporation and uh yeah there's like it's this giant city planet basically like fucking mega city one on a planetary scale type thing and the signs of fighting are fucking everywhere there's like lasers flinging off into the sky but basically you've got this like horizon that is made up of skyscrapers with a backdrop of like a nebula uh, and then if you look further beyond that, you've got like all these asteroids that are sort of floating through the sky. Yeah. I talked to, uh, I legit talked to the art dude about that because I was fucking staggered by it. And uh, he was telling me that uh, it's not just Skybox. Uh, the asteroid belt is actually rendered and uh, like rotates, has like a pattern to its rotation and stuff. Like, sure. It's all mapped out and stuff, uh, which is lunacy. Utterly unnecessary. But uh, depending on where the, I, I believe where the sun in the system is, hmm. it'll reflect light in different ways as well, which is crazy shit. Um, 
Yeah, like that was just that's just literally just looking up in the sky on one of the fucking levels. The amount of detail to the fucking skybox is out of fucking control. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, obviously it gets all the way down to the micro level, the grass and stuff, which is sick. And then yeah, you play yeah. the game. I mean, it feels exactly like it should, it feels like which Borderlands, yeah. The tr- it's super tricky to do that because it's on Unreal Engine 4 now and they couldn't just drag it. It's not drag and drop. They had to, I was saying they basically had to build it, rebuild it from the, the ground up. Yep. Um, so yeah, to for them to have nailed the Borderlands feel is an achievement on a brand new engine. Uh, I'll, like if it, it totally feels like Borderlands. Uh, even from like the, the slight floatiness of your jumps yeah you know you like jump fucking everywhere in borderlands and it's got like a bounce to it yep. they've now that bounce once again like that's fucking awesome you were saying that they were going to change gravity on different planets right yeah i, I, I that heard that <laughs> there was go- because obviously pre-sequel was 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 mm. um had the gravity changes on the moon certain sections yeah and they had like gameplay elements based around that yeah as well and uh, yeah, I, I'd heard that there are going to be some le- or some worlds that will have different types of like gravity or atmosphere. Like it'll behave differently. Whether or not that's as as crazy as what it was in the pre sequel, or it's just something a little bit toned down. Yeah, um, I'm not sure, but I, that's what I had heard. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm about I mean, it. that, I mean, that I... like gives each planet sort of, sort of like a different feel as well, or they could do something different. It's just not like, hey, here's a new art style this specific planet like, it was we also know like lines. one of my favorite things about the pre-sequel because one of the things i've always liked about borderlands is the passive sort of uh platforming first person platforming and you know yeah. i love me some platforming uh you know i just fucking wanked on about superland for however long the other week yeah. uh because that game's all first person platforming um yeah like bat- uh, battle uh uh, Borderlands was like the original first person platformer for me. Yeah. You found so many fucking sick chests by leaping <laughs> and yeah, but like you couldn't climb in the previous ones. Like no, they've added jump. the clamber. Yeah, you had to just be real good at fucking jumping, which is awesome. Uh, I'm happy to, I'm excited to see what the clamber like adds to that, uh, like that fact facet of the the game like the the exploration because i found some interesting things and found some my way to some some cool little chests by clambering up shit uh i probably could have done it just by jumping though if i'd had the fucking will of the warrior you were but playing on easy mode fuck off mate with you jumping fuck off. climbing on ledges when yeah does borderlands need an easy mode um yeah uh like the the platforming stuff is I'm, I'm 100 there for it and i think changing the gravity is such an interesting way to to change up how the platforming works you know and that was the best thing about the pre-sequel in my opinion was its ability to fuck with mm. how you interpreted uh platforming and obviously it was, it's quite fun in combat as well uh unless you've got a longbow grenade in which case everything just teleports wherever the fuck you got looking anyway. Actually, sure. speaking of the longbow grenades, I had one. Do they have like an accuracy issue or something? Or was I just fucking shit? I don't know. I I was throwing grenades and they were not going where I thought they would. And I think of myself as perhaps one of the the greatest throwers in all of game history you know i've thrown so many games of PUBG, uh (laughs) so many games of apex just thrown on my my behalf but also grenades i'm good at throwing grenades as well not just games and uh yeah i don't know what the fuck is going on but these longbows were not going where i thought they were and it felt like they had like a crosshair that was sort of like a shotgun style crosshair and they'll go whether they, like maybe they were going wherever it was in the circle, but that's not how I remember the longbow go, like acting. Maybe it's like a balancing thing to make mm. the longbow less overpowered because those longbows were usually the only fucking uh, only grenades I ever used. I mean, I 
sometimes use clusters just to fuck with my teammates, but generally longbows for you know getting shit done. Like, oh, I killed myself in the in the demo. Killed myself with a cluster. Threw it at my feet. Uh, and it exploded and then exploded and exploded and exploded. And uh, I was like, <laughs> and I look, I look over at you and you were looking at me like I was a fucking dipshit. And, but I could also see the dude, uh, one of the like 2K handlers hmm. standing behind me, like a gearbox staff guy standing behind me. And he's like just shaking his head like, <laughs> who let this guy in? <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck? Uh, I didn't even, like we didn't think people would be able to die at this point in the fucking game. Uh, I found a way. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, speaking of uh, dying, the uh, enemies are different. Each each planet has different like wildlife. You don't just fight skags anymore. Uh, you've got like ratchlings on Promethea, uh, and. You're also fighting like Malawan soldiers. There are psychos, uh, but they've got like in game reasons to excuse why the psychos are showing up, sure. all this kind of stuff. But yeah, each planet will have different wildlife. You don't have the same wildlife on each planet anymore, like, well, not anymore at all. Um, and it, according to the enemy designer, it was super important that they, they made sure of that. Uh, for a sort of for their own pride they didn't want to have the same animals uh, but I did notice that you know the ratchlings walked a bit funny because they had backwards knees but like they did sort of just sort of scuttle at you uh, or the spitting ones would spit at you so right. they felt a bit skaggy so I don't know how you felt about them but yeah don't uh, know. I don't I didn't know. notice too much too, they were dead too quick. <laughs> they were dead, dead way too quick. Well, you played as... Um, I played as Zane. Zane. So and I played as Amara. Yeah. Two characters, Zane and Amara. Um, Zane seems like he was a lot better than Amara. I don't know, man. I, um, I... He definitely had better guns. Well, I saw some guns that people were using on Amara. It was like a, a, like a flamethrower thing or something. It shot like a laser flame I, I don't know i didn't um, get that and i'm like that looks pretty cool it was like an alternate fire mode on on the, the oh mode. on the fucking shotgun god damn it yeah okay that yeah. makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah i'm like oh, okay yeah fair enough yeah. um it reminded me kind of like the lightning gun yeah but it shot flames so yeah, yeah. uh how can we hear the same plane? That is weird. That is weird. Because we're not near each other. No. Um, so, yeah, I played as Zane. Zane's like a, an operative. He's sort of like a mix between a bunch of different characters from the last couple of games. Mm. Um, like a hunter class. Um, so he's got a sentry that he can put out. And it's sort of um, like you can command it to attack people. Um, so that's like one of the build the builds that you can do because remember like the last couple of games you'd be like I'm gonna play as as this person like the commando and they'd have a sentry that they put down as kind of just stationary and that's what they do now it's like you've got three different trees and they've got different abilities on each one and that's the one you select so you don't necessarily have to have like I'm gonna play Zane with a sentry like we could both play as Zane but our I'm builds completely could be completely different, completely different. yeah. yeah. I think that's really fucking smart, like super smart of them to do that. Yeah. Because when I know when we used to play the last couple of games, it, it's the kind of thing like, all right, who's going to be like brick and who's going to be this? Yeah. Like, like you kind of want to spread things out. Uh, it's like, oh, someone's already that character, so I can't go that. Whereas now it's like, all right, you can basically play the same characters, just don't have the same builds. Um, so I picked Zane because I wanted his turret because. Um, I don't know. I'm just that's the way I normally play those games. So, yep. yeah, I, I basically could pick this sentry and he'd throw it out, and then you start putting points into the skill tree, and um, they've got like augments on these trees as well, so it, it kind of affects your skills in a way. Mm. And so I put one on there that did cryo damage, which meant that um, it would freeze enemies, and then like I could just shatter them so they just um like break into pieces yeah so that was that was really cool um a cool way of sort of exploring the different options you've got there um one of the other ones i did was 
I do more damage while I'm moving, so it's this like push forward combat type thing where if you're moving, all right, I'm now doing thirty percent more damage. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's like a there's a lot of different variations in that you can kind of go in and look at. Yeah. Um, I, what, like, what did you do on Amara? Like, what was your skill set? Oh, I chose super fucking dumbly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I went the gra- like the fist that grabs people from underneath. Uh, which oh, was it's like the, yeah, that was the siren skill in. Yeah, the so she Amara's a siren, Lewis. and she's just sort of a siren. She just does siren things. Uh, she didn't seem that interesting, to, to be honest, as a character. Not as interesting as Zane. That's why I wish I'd gone Zane. Uh, but yeah, that did the grab thing. Great for single target damage, but ultimately not terribly interesting as a like, a, you know, as an ability. Mm. Um, and yeah, I could only tech my way directly into like elemental stuff, um, like boosting fire damage and stuff like that. So I, I didn't yeah. find any. I think I just picked the wrong fucking tree. I think I mean, her, that tree gets much more interesting further down. And, oh yeah, for sure. Because that yeah. was one of the things that I looked at. Because obviously, oh, I'm going to choose the sh- the sentry because it shoots shit. But there was one like, uh, like a force field that you can put up or oh, a yeah. shield. Yeah. And it's like. I don't want a shield. Like, that sounds dumb. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm the type... I want to go shoot stuff. Maybe it's good for, like, a type of boss. But then you start looking down that tree and it's like, all right, if you need the shield, you start getting uh, health regen. Or you stand behind the shield and you can shoot through it and you do more damage if you're yeah, shooting yeah. through it. And it, other things can't hit you. And then, well, like, once you start going down that tree, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is some of this could be pretty useful. Um, so, yeah. again, it's just one of those things where you've got to do a bit of research and sort of or switch you know on. you'd probably switch you use the the change or whatever the fuck it is to switch to that tree once you had the points yeah it wouldn't be it'd be a, a it's a late game sort of tree not something you level up with which yep. yeah it's why I, I sort of picked poorly but yeah um i yeah i don't know i've never really played the siren uh, which is why I picked to play the siren, but I shouldn't have. I should have gone with the one I found more interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh well. On the That's true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about your guns? You, you were saying. Yeah, that, I didn't like my guns because uh, I think we had starting guns. It sounds like, from what I read, that everybody did start off the same guns. No, no. Like everyone, yeah, everyone who picked a certain class started with the same guns. Yep. So all the Zanes started with the same guns, and all of the uh, Amaras started with the same guns, but the Amaras and the Zanes didn't start with the same guns. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, in your build. So uh, let's have a squiz. I can get the, the full details of the weapons. Boop, boop, boop. Here we go. Amaras loadouts. Uh, an epic level Dahl SMG. Um, which switches between uh, a dial SMG rather epic level yeah dial SMG uh, does fire damage and swaps between fully automatic and a five shot burst which is fucking pointless uh, like yeah it was my highest damage weapon so it's almost exclusively what I used uh, but yeah it was just a sort of regular old SMG it was very dull I had a good scope, which was the only thing I liked about it. But uh, yeah, a shit ton of recoil because it was an SMG. So mm-hmm. uh, then a rare Maliwan shotgun. Uh, that was the one that swapped to the fire stuff. Yep. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, and Jacob's pistol. Uh, They're like the cr- Western pistols, right? Yeah, it was like raw, the raw triggers and. Uh, Critical hits ricochet uh, a single bullet to the nearest enemy, which was pretty good because it was real easy to headshot people with it. Um, but the ricochet bullets never crit hitted, so you weren't like it wasn't useful for that much extra damage. Uh, it was just a bit of a tiny bit of extra damage. Um, yeah, Zane had the Vladov assault rifle. So it shot like electric bolts. 
and, and had under barrel grenades yeah so uh this is the alternate fire mode that, that mm. a bunch of the weapons had so you press like uh down on the d-pad i don't know what it'll be on the pc but um like you press the button and now all of a sudden your gun does something different so this one was the um grenade launcher yeah yep. uh and the hyperion shotgun epic level yeah so this one did that set people on fire yep um so i think that that works sort of similar to the last game where there's like a i guess a percentage chance of how much it takes to set them on fire and then they're on fire so yep. you're doing burn damage um it also had a shield on it as well which stops bullets from coming through like gibraltar because um, you had yep. to aim ads to activate it right yeah yeah and, and then also any bullets that uh were hitting it you had a percentage chance for that the, the ammo to return to your uh your pocket so to, replenish like, your ammo stealing, if stuff yeah. hit the shield yeah and then um, third you have the smg the tdor smg tdor is the uh the manufacturer who does guns with legs yeah so in the last game in borderlands 2 they were the ones where you would reload the gun by throwing it and it would digitize back into your hands Mm. um and you'd have a new gun and the last one was i think the 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 gimmick about it was you'd throw it and the more ammo it had left in the the um the mag the more damage it would do as a grenade as a grenade explode yeah um whereas this time around they're like doing a lot of different variations like Mm. they showed us a bunch there um the one that i had was a um it would basically become a turret and so you could throw it at a wall and it would stick to the wall and then start shooting people um for a couple of seconds and and so i could have like three or four of them out i just like fire a bullet and then throw it into the wall or throw it onto like the top of the ceiling and then you'd see all these lasers like aiming at enemies and that's another cool thing is one of the guys mentioning the other day is like if you don't know where somebody is the turret will sort of aim at them and then you can go oh, okay they're over this side um so it, it's handy to like give you an idea of where enemies are if you've kind of lost track of them right um but the other the other instances that we saw of this gun were like guns with legs where it would run around on the ground and start shooting people or it would jump at them and explode um or just like bounce around the map and it, yeah yeah it was seems like they'd taken but look at the difference between the weapons zane had fucking <laughs> under barrel grenade launcher shield that gives you bullets back throw like reload and turn it into a turret versus fucking ricochet on a crits or also does fire damage or can be a five round burst fuck off amara's loadout was fucking shit it was terrible i got ripped off Mm. terrible guns terrible guns i tell you yeah my only complaint about the shooting and sounds like this was common amongst other people and it might have just been the way that i was playing it because i was more or less trying to get through content um i found myself running out of ammo quite oh yeah yeah 100 percent and uh i I wasn't sure if that was because i just wasn't looting everything in sight or if it was just because things were taking too much damage to die um i I was hammering through my ammo yeah Yeah. obviously um in the last games as well and it seems to be in this game you go to a trader and uh and get extra ammo capacity yeah. and it looks like it's in this game because um that dude was on sanctuary 3 holding out where you'd like trade him um iridium yeah sanctuary 3 is your ship in the last game you'd trade him iridium the purple currency and you'd yeah. be like i want to carry extra grenades or yeah um you know extra shotgun ammo uh maybe they didn't have that in there yet i don't know but it felt like i was running out of ammo a lot. like i get to fights it's probably in it'll definitely be in the footage that yeah, people are watching where oh, yeah. i'm like i'm out of ammo during this fucking fight like what do i do and i'm or, just, like punching people yeah or i'm fucking hip firing my fucking three round burst sniper rifle that i eventually found uh because i'm out of fucking ammo and everything's way too close for me to do anything but just hip fire cunts uh, yeah mm. it's good mm. um definitely running out of ammo i think yeah you definitely weren't the only one um but yeah 
was good. Good guns. Yeah. Uh, sure like good. some good guns. That like I found that yeah, it's sniper rifle. And I was really happy that I did because it felt like I was able to actually switch out some of the shit. Um, but yeah. And yeah, the vehicles. I, st- I, I, I've never loved the driving in Borderlands, um, and I still don't love it, <laughs> basically. Right. But I did find a, yeah, I found a technical with a mine launcher on top, uh, which is cool. Hmm. Uh, and the last yeah. game you used to throw the barrels, right? Yeah. So the technical had the barrel launcher as well, but you could switch it out for a mine launcher. Oh yeah, because that's the thing, right? There's customization in the uh, yeah. The vehicles now like you can change the tires yeah <laughs> on the on, on the uh the, the car um, yeah there's stacks of customization mm. i found that circle thing the you know circle thing the you, cy- was it cyclone it's yeah something cyclone. like that yeah yeah so i thought it was a cyclone um i didn't like the way it drove uh sorry i didn't like the way it's uh com- like it's combat capabilities it seemed like the the other the normal um, vehicle had rocket launchers and a machine gun, whereas this only just had machine guns. And- but it was a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was good. Uh, there were shortcuts. Did you unlock any shortcuts? I unlocked a couple, which is cool. I don't uh, think so. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I think will be... Handy. Yeah. Yeah, because the map is... Um, uh, like verticality is sort of plays into it a bit more um i don't know if you looked much at the map but it's not 2d it's now 3d you can like it looks like it's 2d but then you can move it around and do oh. the different layers and be like oh, okay, this I- is a this is a tunnel that goes underground and this bit pops up up here like how things connect uh in terms of where they are on the actual map makes it a bit easier to read which is which is handy yeah cool yeah um I mean, obviously, Borderlands is, is known for having, like, references and things like that. I only... The only one that I saw was the Bioshock one. Um, well, that, the, that sort of jumped out into mind, which is during the... I think you did this quest as well, the Rise and Grind quest? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh. oh I got okay. to start it, and that's it. Right. Well, one of the... This quest goes for quite a while, and uh, it was just a side mission. Yeah. Um, and basically, it involves you at this uh this coffee shop with a, like a hipster robot barista um and they're trying to get you to to you know go get coffee and all this sort of stuff and it goes for quite a while and at one point you're killing it's called uh, a core daddy um and it's sort of <laughs> similar style to a big daddy nice um you can see a couple of those types of enemies running around the map but i was like oh yeah okay that's pretty funny that to me that was the only sort of reference that i saw in terms of what's in there like because they pretty reference heavy on some of the games um like culturally yeah, yeah. um but that's sort of the only thing that really stood out to me as i was running around looking throughout the world i definitely recall chuckling a couple of times but off the top of my head i cannot remember uh any so that's i'm helped. sure there's tons of dialogue in there and yeah and that sort of thing um but yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to have to watch that footage again. But that was the one that really stood out to me, as being like, okay, yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, the uh, the actual main campaign, I think I did like two missions, and the rest of them I did a bunch of side quests. That was yeah. what I would spent most of my time doing. It seems massive. It seems huge. It does, yeah. Like, man, the amount of time I pissed away just trying to jump up to places that I couldn't get to or finding that I could get to places, stuff like that. Like, ridiculous. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else is there? Sanctuary 3 is like the home base. Yep. Uh, and that's what you'll be using as a ship to sort of explore these different worlds. Um, that's kind of like the area that you go back to as your main point of contact. Um, and it's got a bunch of familiar characters on the the ship people like uh moxie ellie so hammerlock um and uh yeah it's like it seems like this huge area that can kind of go out and explore and they're talking about how 
um, obviously in the last game you'd had the challenges and Hamlock would be like giving you different tasks to go out and do and he's got like a trophy room set up now yeah um, and you'll be able to I guess complete those tasks and get some sort of trophy on the wall you've also got your own private room that you'll be able to decorate um, don't know like how deep that goes into it but they're talking about being able to like mantle your favorite guns on the wall yeah and use like them that. later and stuff like that yeah so not too sure how deep that sort of level of customization is mm. um but yeah it's um it looks like there's a lot sort of going on and it's an easy way for them to be like all right we're doing dlc so all we need to do is chuck in a new planet on this list um, yeah as opposed to like in the last game you'd go to the checkpoint and then be like all right what's what's in this map now and it'd just be like a marker on the map that you'd go to and it'd open up a new area um what'd you think of the uh the villains so we've got two new villains the calypso twins yeah um the way they sort of described them was was like obnoxious streamers yeah <laughs> uh which, which obviously played well to the uh, media the crowd um <laughs> but yeah um they seem interesting i like i'm they remind me a bit of um do you remember fucking that bruce willis movie hudson hawk mm -hmm. yeah they remind me of the two out of that the twins out of that a little bit uh, you know like just sort of fucking weird over the top uh sort of characters uh who you're gonna love to hate i think um like they're just gonna get more and more annoying endearingly annoying over the course of the game until you finally get to kill them like and when you do get to kill them it'll be really satisfying yeah that's how I, it felt to me but it's really early to say i mean there's only this there were only a couple of interactions um that you had with them yeah so it's, it's yeah it's it's definitely early but yeah they're like very reminiscent of those Hudson Hawk characters which is a really weird place to draw inspiration from unless they themselves were inspired by something and my pop culture reference radar is out of whack Hudson Hawk style out of whack swinging on a star um yeah I don't know yeah I, I, I like it, man. Like, I, I like them, but I could... That's the thing about Borderlands, right? That's the thing that has always been Borderlands' blessing and curse is that it's always real possible if the tone of the or the writing doesn't get you or you don't get yeah. with it, that you don't sync with it and you just, like, hate it. So many people I know hated not so many, but a lot of people I know hated the fucking dialogue in Borderlands 2. Yeah. Hated Claptrap. Like, all these things. And I'm like, you're fucking nuts. Claptrap's the fucking best. That can't, like, the dialogue is fantastic. They did so much good stuff in it. Um, yeah. But, like, I can totally see not gelling with it. So, yeah. 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 Um, speaking of Claptrap, did you, like... The, they've obviously changed voice actors for Claptrap. Yeah, it's not noticeable. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think it was noticeable either. Yeah. Yeah, um, which is good. And I guess the other one is the Reese character. Um, there was uh, some news recently about Troy Baker talking about um, he didn't even know <laughs> that character was, it was in the game because he get he did the character in Tales of the Borderlands. Right. Um, they've obviously brought him back for he's brought that character back for this game but he will not be voicing that character um, yeah he was in the demo that we played so he was he was voiced by somebody yeah Toby Baker. Nope. Yep. um it's a weird bit of conspiracy i guess yeah I um yeah oh speaking of voice acting lorelei is apparently australian no she's not australian she's not australian she, she is apparently australian she can't be like an Australian actor. She, oh, she's an Australian actor, yes, but she's playing a British person, or, or like, you know, she has a British accent. She's definitely got a British accent, except you hear the twang every now and then. Yeah, because when like, that first came up on the screen, I turned to Steve and was like, I was sitting next to Steve Farrelly, and I was like, oh, they've got an Australian in here. 
because that was going to be one of the questions I asked. Greetings, my good charms, pre- my pre-sequel was obviously um, set on this moon base, yeah. and it had a bunch of it was built in Australia, it was made in Australia, so a lot of the voice acting was Australian. Had they thought it'd be funny to put a bunch of Australians in there? Yeah, um, and that was going to be one of my questions. And when she came up on the screen, I was like, "Holy shit, they've got all right, cool Australians in there. Let's find out how many more they've got in there." And mm-hmm. then we played it. And Steve was like, no, no, she's definitely Australian. And I'm like, have a listen. Like, it's, she's not. And then you could listen to it. But it was strange because every once in a while, she'd say something and you'd be like, that's an Australian. Like, you could hear the Australian coming out of it. Um, and then I went and talked to with the character artist. And they're like, oh, yeah, she's, she's played by an Australian. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. Um, but it was just kind of, kind of off-putting being able to hear this Australian accent coming through every mm. once in a while uh, as like a, you know, on top of this British accent. Um, so yeah, maybe there will be some Australian accents in there. We just don't know yet. We'll have to see. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, what else was there that we can talk about? Um, don't know. Check my list. What I've got. Uh, destructible environments. What? Destructible environments. I didn't, didn't notice. notice that. Nope. There was bits of cover um, where they would shoot it and disappear. Oh, yeah. Um, there was like stuff on bits of the environment. Like uh, you could set up as traps. So like they would start spitting out oil and then you could set that on fire and it'd blow people up. Or there was certain, certain parts where you'd hit like a a uh, handle off of the side of a barrel and it'd start spewing out radiation which is a new elemental effect um so that's sort of i know like barrels and stuff but yeah i didn't notice there's any obviously other like barrels but there's things in the environment you can interact with yeah, as right. well as cover being destructible like if you yeah, go back yeah. and watch those videos you'll see stuff shredding uh like concrete being shredded away or like bits of metal disappearing that you can start to start shoot through awesome cool yeah um what else is that maybe maybe about it obviously there'll be um a bunch of the old characters will be returning um from the crimson raiders so you'll see a bunch of of people from that that'll come in and help you uh that was kind of teased i guess at the end of that presentation with zero showing up yeah um and And obviously and what's the face is there from the get-go lilith yeah yeah. Um, you know, that was something that happened in 2 as well. You kind of started meeting these old characters from the first game who are now like commanders and whatnot. Um, and then obviously had important roles in the story. Some of them didn't make it through. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, Endgame. They weren't talking about Endgame. No. They refused to talk about Endgame. But uh, i got to speculate, man. i got to speculate pretty hard. Uh, I, I wonder if, you know, I don't, no, that it'll have raids mm. in the sense that we'll have, you know, fights with more than four people. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it's going to have some fucking heavy duty end game boss fights. Uh, because we were talking to the like enemy designer, lead enemy designer, and he was basically saying that, uh, yeah, he's uh, like not even on making the bosses. They, he told me directly that they made a brand new team to like to make bosses for the game. Yeah. They've got a team that works just on the bosses. Um, yeah, so it seems like bosses are their own separate beast. Sure. Uh, which yeah, I'm all about and you wouldn't i feel like you wouldn't do that if they weren't a vitally important elements of how you're going to keep people playing this game does that mean we're looking at you know division raids or something like that i don't know but i mean there's the possibilities there with this whole different skill trees you know yeah um you can obviously have more than four in there yeah like more than four players you reckon i mean yeah if you've got four characters in the game at the moment they're obviously going to add more as the game goes along but also each character having different skill trees in there that they can sort of customize themselves there's this potential of having 
a bunch of different characters to run around with. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, an eight person or six person, whenever they, if they were like, hey, we're just going to bump this up a little bit. Um, I think the biggest tell in it is the gear score stuff. Like, what yeah. is that? What is that relating to? We don't know yet. Um, there's going to be some sort of end game content, but how that sort of ties into whatever they're doing, it's sort of just, as you said, speculation at the moment. Yeah. Because they were uh, not talking about it. No. Um, but I guess one thing we skipped over was the uh, co op and how multiplayer kind of works with scaling. Right. Because um, they weren't, yeah, this was a single player demo. So we didn't get to play any co op, unfortunately, but hopefully we will in the future. But they but, did talk about it, how it worked. They, like, yeah. So it's going to scale towards the lowest player. Um, yep. So if you're a level 25 player and you jump into a, a level 10 player's game, then your damage scales down to, to them. Um, but you'll be getting the same loot. Sorry, you're getting the same level loot that you're at. So they'll be getting level 10 loot, but you're getting level 25. So you can still come in and contribute um, and still be getting stuff out of it for playing, which is, yeah, that's the a smart way of doing it. Hopefully it works. Um, they've uh, they've basically said that it will work across all levels no matter what you're at. So we'll, we'll see how that kind of pans out. Um, and then the other thing is the looting system is instance for each player as well. So you can't steal other people's loot, but there's obviously a classic mode that they're putting in. Yeah. Which means that you can jump in and free for all. Which is exclusively how I all play that game. We will not be playing any instance loot bullshit. That's for that's that's not it. That's not Borderlands. It's <laughs> chump shit. Yeah. I don't care if everyone steals all my goddamn loot. They should be allowed to steal all my goddamn loot. It's about the principle. You used to get so fired up because you'd be fighting people and pe- other people would be over there opening fucking boxes and shit. That's why I was calling Dave Kaziki a cunt that time because <laughs> yes. we were in the middle of a fucking boss fight on New Game Plus. And he was off open up fucking no, it was vending machines. I think he was like cycling through the fucking vending machines. <laughs> Come fucking help us, you cunt! He got very upset. I went too far apparently in calling him a cunt, even though we used to call each other cunt all the time. Yeah, whack. Anyway, um, yeah. Honestly, no instance loot. It's for, it's for shit. That's it's bullshit. Yep. Yep. All right, is there anything else to talk about there? No. It's all, all done. Um, yeah, overall, man, I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's out soon. <laughs> like within six months. Yeah. Yeah, September. Yeah. Which There's going to awesome. be a lot more they've got to show of it. Yeah. Um, they said they've been working on it for over five years, which is promising, we hope. Huge. Yeah. Uh, you can tell. You can tell they've got like that passion they've got for it is so obvious. Uh, talking to the gearbox guys, they're so fucking on deck for it. They just want everyone to play and love their game, and I'm sure people, a lot of people, are going to play and love their game. I think. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Epic Game Store, right? Epic Game Store. I don't care. I don't Exclusive. care. Yeah, um, yeah, we've talked about that enough, I think. But uh, yeah, it's also on PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, I'd love crossplay; that'd be fucking awesome. Um, that was the rumor, right? When it, it was popped yeah. up on the Xbox store. Yeah, that that could just be crossplay between PC and Xbox. But absolutely, crossplay would be great. Um, I mean, it's not a game that that like it's not like it's a competitive game not competitive so. yeah so you, like if I can play with my brother when he's on PlayStation then that'll be sick mm. carrying carrying through some levels uh, but yeah at the same time yeah jump on Discord and play with all the crew that'll be even better or if yeah if the crew can play one whatever the fuck they want if they won't really want to boycott Epic Game Store then I guess they could always play on Xbox or PlayStation. Um, but yeah, no, should be sick. Yep. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, if, if they pull it off, I, I don't see how it doesn't end up on my top five at the end of the year. 
Yeah. Unless something drastically bad goes wrong with it. Maybe the writing is just shit <laughs> and there's no good story. Um, yeah. And it's just the same stuff over and over again. But yeah. I, seems unlikely. It's, yeah, it seems unlikely. And uh, I don't know. It's definitely extremely high up on my radar. Oh, yeah. I'm so pumped for that game. It's, it's a top contender at the moment for me. Mm. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'm sure we'll be talking about that a bunch more as um yeah as it gets closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Days Gone. I played a little bit of Days Gone. This was released. Uh, I don't even know when. Was it last week? The week before? Yeah. I can't. I can't yeah, remember. just before we went to watch Michael Lord, right? Right. Yeah, we we both got early um both got early code for it. I didn't sink too much time in it. I think I only had like three days three days to play through it or right. to play um, I've maybe put 10 hours into it so far um, have you had a chance to play any of it I played like the fucking opening mission and decided I didn't want to continue right basically um, that is a weird opening mission it's not so, only because well, it's not good but there's a point later on like really soon afterwards where you get the same cutscene again what yeah Really? So you see, you watch it a second time, and then you play through parts of it, uh, or something like that. That's weird. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. It was strange, because it came up. I'm like, are we literally going to watch this whole thing again? Because it went on for a, a while. That's. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it's a zombie game. Uh, where you're playing a biker dude that shoots zombies and trying to survive. Um, like it's got interesting elements about it. I think the world is really cool. Yeah. like the look of it it's an extremely pretty game oh yeah it is gorgeous yeah it's, it's got like some sick weather effects in there um like it, it'll start raining and all of a sudden like the mud like the ground sorry starts turning to mud and your bike is flicking up all this dirt and mud everywhere um and there are puddles on the road and on the mud like it just looks amazing when that's happening the trees are like swaying backwards and forwards um just like the environments look extremely pretty even when you go to like a town like a broken down town and you start you can start going through houses and there's tons of detail everywhere but the rest of the game is kind of shallow Mm. like there's not a lot going on it's it's trying to be this survival game where you're going out and collecting all this stuff but you're really just collecting scrap all the time and it's the same scrap pieces over and over again um and you're using that scrap to build things. It's like, oh, I'm getting, you know, a couple of rags and uh, some bottles and then making them into a Molotov. Um, and the rest of it is just, yeah, uh, a scrap to repair your vehicle or to, um, you know, to create certain items that you've got. It's not like you're really looking for bits and pieces per se. Like, oh, here's um, not like a DayZ style thing where there's all these tons of different things that you can find. It's only kind of like, there's three or four things you go out and find in the, in the world. And that's what you use to build the the stuff in your inventory, like the crafting recipes that you've got. Um, so it kind of gets pretty shallow in terms of that sort of stuff. Doesn't that make it super linear? Yeah, because you, you kind of just, like it's false, right? It's false openness. Yeah. Cause you, you, you could go out, and do this like loot extra stuff or whatever the fuck yeah but it's not in your best interest because well, you, i mean you've gotten to a town and you just you're finding the same shit that you found in the last yeah. town type stuff like oh i'm finding more of the more beer bottles cool. yeah and you, don't you have yeah uh, super limited, limited space yeah. yeah so yeah i've made three beer bottles so i've made three molotovs and now i'm full so cool um but the detail around that area is really cool and, and um, and and that's what is like kind of interesting to me is is that the rest of it is really strangely put because there are these zombies in the world and uh, they are quite mindless they're, like they're zombies obviously and they um sort of patrol areas and it's kind of hard to get an idea of where they're patrolling because they can be quite sort of sporadic in their movements they could be moving one way and all of a sudden they'll turn around and start heading towards the direction you're in. 
So um, because resources are quite limited and your best interest is to stealth kill things, um, either silently using a, a, like a, a melee knife or, um, or a silenced pistol or something like that, Otherwise, if you start making quite a bit of noise, it alerts the other zombies in the area, and all of a sudden you've got a you know, bigger problem to deal with. And when you've got a melee bat that has dur durability on it, and you've kind of got to manage that, that can become a problem if you be, like start getting too loud. Right. Um, and so yeah, the you're you're basically forced in that case to do stealth, and the, but the stealth isn't that great, so. You kind of just stabbing things all the time, mm. um, and that's not fun. And I guess the core pillar of the game was at one stage when they first showed this off. It was like, "Hey, look! All this zombie tech that we've got. There's hundreds of zombies on the screen, yeah. and you kill them um, <laughs> by setting up traps and all this other stuff." And I've done that. I've I've played an E3 build where um, there was a horde, and you set up traps, and then you trigger the horde and they chase after you and you set all these traps off you turn around and shoot them with all your weapons that you've got and you're trying to basically kill them all um i've not come across that really yet at all there's one horde that i've that i've found and uh i just i didn't have anything to deal with it so i guess that's something i have to come back to later on but otherwise i've played 10 hours and i've not seen anything like that <laughs> it's pretty much just random zombies walking around most of the time um there are mm. other humans in the world that uh like trying to cause trouble for you as well but haven't really seen much of them um so yeah i just don't know what sort of the gameplay like what should what i should be doing out there there are obviously missions and whatnot um like main missions you can go out and do there's side missions but they're all again have just been clearing out other areas of zombies and it's not that exciting at the moment so i don't know where it kind of goes from there i've heard a lot of mixed reactions from people um i think nate at one stage was saying he really liked it but it was quite buggy yeah and there was a, a bunch of people that were saying the same sort of thing but i think it got, kind of gets to a stage where it's just quite repetitive yeah and i've heard that he's, it's like a he's turned on it. game he's like he he was like, yeah, I like it. I like playing it. But like over the, the last week, he was, it was, it's compelling, but repetitive. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the way I feel. I like the first 10 hours. I'm like, yeah, I, okay, this is cool. But I, like, I haven't had any bugs when I was playing. They did a big patch before I, before I got it. Um, and I haven't seen any bugs yet. Um, but it's just sort of gone to that point where I'm like, then there's needs to be more in this game for me to kind of like it because it's just not doing anything exciting. Like, it's not ramping up anywhere. It's just been sort of flat for 10 hours. Um, so, like, I'm going around exploring and there's different areas, um, you know, r riding your motorbike, you're managing fuel. Like, at one point, I ran out of fucking fuel on my bike and so you can, like, push pedal it around, but that's not helpful because <laughs> zombies start attacking you so then it's like all right i gotta go find some fuel you open up your map you look for the like the nearest town or where houses might be and sort of go exploring and looking for fuel mm. um and i guess the idea is you've got this giant map and there are fuel stations around and you start unlocking them and then you can start like fast traveling these spots and you go you go fill up your tank and then go to the next spot um but it's just like the the gunplay like they give you all these weapons to use and whatnot but if you start using them you make too much noise and then you don't have enough ammo to deal with things like it feels like you've got 50 rounds for an assault rifle but it takes too way too many bullets to take down a zombie for it to be any good so there's no point shooting anything because i might as well just stab them um, yeah i don't know if that's changed since i've played it because it's been from what I understand, they've been releasing patches daily for that game. Mm. But it, it was, ex I felt like the, the enemies were extremely bullet spongy. Like they took way too many bullets to go down. Mm. Um, in, for the amount of ammo that it, yeah, it took them, I just felt like it's not what, it wasn't worth it. I might as well just stealth kill things, which is yeah, not the way I want to play that game. Um, 
I'm sure I'll get back into it now that I'm home and sort of see what else there is to offer because I mean I want to play Sea of Thieves but I have to play that with the crew right let's just play Sea of Thieves yeah but I mean when when I'm playing games and everyone's gone to bed at 10 o'clock because I don't know your grandpa sure um, sure I might might have to play some because I don't because because listen to this listen to this okay yeah uh, fucking Captain's sleep patterns over here, right? I got up fucking a couple of times during the flight, mostly just to do something because I didn't sleep very much. Uh, and every time I got up, I'd go for a walk up and down the fucking aisle and I'd see him. I'd look over at where Luke was and he was literally just fucking in the same position, like straight day to sleep. And he was like that from the fucking moment he was on the plane. It's like he just switched off. It's like he's a robot that powered down in its seat and then powered back up again when he felt like the, his internal computers recognized that there was a, like, we we're changing altitude or some shit. And it's like, oh, time to power up. Cycle on. Welcome to Luke 3.0. Now, yeah. fucking don't talk to me about sleep, okay? Those of us with normal fucking normal brains fucking need sleep. God damn it. I can't believe you'd bring this up. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. it was weird. It was actually, it was super weird seeing you fucking. Because you just, you don't have, like, I've got, like, fucking, I've got a hoodie and I've got an eye mask and a neck pillow and fucking, I take fucking tablets and all this kind of shit. I can't pillows. It's, what? It's, it's like, it takes up too much room on that chair and my feels my head's going to fucking, I don't like it. I don't like, I've. Maybe I'm doing using them wrong or something. Like, you got to get the headrest. You got to lift the headrest all the way up the top, yeah. and then the neck pillow slots in just underneath the headrest, and that's that's the perfect. And then you can sort of like actually lean your head on right. the neck pillow you itself. Can come set it up for me next time. All right. Uh, it's not. Why would I bother? It doesn't fucking, fucking matter. <laughs> You'll be asleep anyway. I'll be I like was... sitting there fucking adjusting the neck pillow, and you'll be like dead asleep already. Fucking the God. only thing that happens is my arms get sore right when i'm sleeping like because i don't know where to put them if i yep. cross them i wake up and i'm like oh my fucking arms are sore yeah i don't know and then Do you know, leave my heart, the arms my, are sore again my trick is uh i wear a hoodie with one of those like front pockets like a fun kangaroo pouch right and i tuck my hands in there and they just sort of like hang then yeah and they still get a bit sore but they're not as sore as when i sleep with my arms on the armrests or arms crossed yeah but i actually have to sleep for any of this shit to actually work and i couldn't sleep because the uh fucking two rows to my direct right were entirely children uh so were you sitting next you were in the same area as me no i was in the cabin in front oh okay Um, two kids next behind me uh and well the dude behind me got up like i think 14 times in the flight uh, he was on the aisle uh but when he got up he was a large guy mm. and he would use my seat to get up he did the the old grab, grab the, the back of the seat and yank it up <laughs> and it was like cool <laughs> yeah like he thought it was a slot machine <laughs> uh well uh, the other thing that happened on this flight was i was getting changed into so I, I changed into like sleeping clothes uh, and then change back out weird. at the end of the flight. It's not weird. It's... I do it before I get on the plane. Well, I did it before I got on the plane this time as well because I was in the fucking lounge. Uh, but yeah, I got I got into the, the bathroom to change and I changed my out of my tracky dacks and into my pants. And uh, this this fucking slamming on the door and I've still got my hoodie on. Uh, this like slamming on the on the toilet door and I open the door up and there's this lady with a fucking giant fucking like sagging nappy in her hand. She's like, I'm just going to get rid of this. I've really got to get rid of this. So I'm like, okay, fair enough. And I duck out of the fucking way of what had to be a giant, giant amount of shit <laughs> in this lady's hand. Yeah. And she crams it into the fucking bin. And then she's like washing her hands. She's like, oh, thank you so much. I just, you know, I couldn't get anyone else to open up and I just really needed to get rid of it. Thank you so much. I'm like, no worries, no worries. And so I, walk back into the fucking into the toilet uh close the door and like i'm changing out of my hoodie so i'm not even using like i'm literally just trying to change it and it takes me 30 fucking seconds if you just leave me alone to do it 
right? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a big guy. I know <laughs> this, okay? Uh, but I can still get changed in a fucking airport, uh, airplane toilet in, like, pretty quickly. Uh, it's it's no big hassle. Um, but, yeah. No, fucking wall banging on the door. And uh, before I go to open it, I hear yelling, and it's these two people outside. And they're like... You weren't next in line. You weren't next in line. Uh, I just ignore them. Uh, but they keep banging. Like they just keep hammering on this fucking door, and it's really annoying. Uh, but I change, change my shirt and all this kind of stuff, and fucking open up the door. And there's this fucking like dude who comes up to like legit my fucking nipples, right? Standing there, like strong arm literally in the door like in the door frame right like just fucking and he's like you weren't you weren't next in line i'm like i was next i was i let the lady like he's still standing in the door frame i'm i'm trapped in the toilet at this point like with the amount of stress that like you know you caused me from fucking hammering on the door it slowed down my fucking changing shirts process and all this kind of standing in the fucking door frame someone could be pissing by now Right, but no. Anyway, I'm like, I was next in line. I just let the lady get rid of her giant nappy. I don't see on the, like, how is this the problem? And he's like, you weren't next in line. No, that's not how the line works. You know, you don't get to just barge your way in. I'm like, I didn't barge my way in. And then I barged my way out by stepping into him and through him uh, because I just wanted to get out of the fucking toilet. And I was pretty angry at this point. And this other lady starts chiming in. She's like, oh, you're so fucking rude. You're so rude. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you're so rude for pushing in. I'm like, I didn't push in. I didn't push in. I was in the toilets and I let the lady use the toilets. I still get to use the fucking toilets at my leisure. She's like, no, you're just rude. And then one of the, the fucking cabin flight attendants comes over and she's like, you know, you shouldn't be pushing in. I'm like... <laughs> This is a Twilight Zone joke. <laughs> fucking gremlin. There's a there's something on the wing. I was like fucking flipping out. Uh, I'm like I didn't I didn't push in, and then I just fucking like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna no, push you out. <laughs> fucking, but yeah, I did push the little guy out of the way, and I think he took more offense to that than anything else, which I guess is fair. But he shouldn't have been standing in the fucking doorway. Why was he trapping me in the toilet? Also, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Right, toilets on planes to Melbourne are far grosser than any toilet I've ever seen on a flight to Sydney. I'm just saying, Melbourne's full of gross cunts. <laughs> just throw it out there. Just throw it out there. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't t- did we talk about why we we're in Melbourne? Oh no, I don't think we did. Our fucking we've our flight got cancelled. Our flight home got fucking pushed. To the next morning, uh, we would not be home yet at this point uh, if we'd stayed for that flight. Although we would have been on an empty flight, I believe, uh, instead of a rammed flight full of Melbourne people. Um, so we get this. You get a text, and I'm like on my on the app, and it's like your flight has been moved to 9 a.m. the next morning. And we're like, what? You're like, what? <laughs> I thought sense. it would be delayed 20 minutes. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, fair enough. Uh, no, uh, 12 hours. So, uh, yeah, we're like, okay, uh, fuck, what, what the fuck are we supposed to do? So we, like, fucking scramble the jets to try and get fucking home today. Uh, in the end, well, at some point, like, Luke's checking, <laughs> you're checking your fucking Qantas app, and, like, it literally just shifted you to, like, fly out of San Francisco. Yeah. But that was apparently false. That it was... had me on an American Airlines flight from LA to San Fran, and then from San Fran to Sydney. Yeah. That would have been a good flight. Oh, that I would have done that, that for sure. They, so, those, it literally got me back into Sydney at six in the morning. And those, the use, they use the newest A380s for those flights, don't they? So it would have been the swankiest fucking flight. Yeah. That, would have been the, that would have been the good one. Um, yeah. Uh, but we get to the airport and they had no fucking clue what was going on. They had no idea. Yeah. Uh, so At this stage, you'd already got a flight in. rebooked. Yeah. By through the Facebook app. Twitter. I used Twitter. Oh, through Twitter. 
Yeah. Nate was calling people. Yeah, Nate spent like, I don't know, like an hour trying to, like, he, he called, he was SMSing, he was on, like, he VPNed into Qantas uh, from Australia so they could use the online chat app because it's not available when you're in the States. Like, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and he didn't get anywhere. Yeah, he didn't get anywhere. And then he jumps on Facebook and it's sorted inside of five minutes. Yeah. Like, legit, if you want to sort your shit out, use social media. Because you then did the same thing. Mm-hmm. You were standing there. Like, the dude at the counter is like, no, we can't put you on a flight to Melbourne because we're at weight capacity. Uh, so it's just, it's not going to happen. Like, uh, he might have done it, pointing at me. He might have managed to do it, but nobody else will. The plane is at weight capacity. Nobody else will get booked onto it. And then Nate's like, I just got booked onto it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's, he's standing like, there. He's like, he's like, I don't know what's going on. Well, well I, I, I don't know. And then he starts calling people. And while he's on the phone to find out how fucking wrong he is, you sort it out on Facebook as well. <laughs> Jesus yeah, I'm Christ. like showing him as I'm getting messages, being like, yeah, your flight's now confirmed, and like it's done. All right, see ya. We're out. <laughs> Banana shit. Oh. Uh, he was. I don't envy him at all. I don't blame him either because clearly. He was not given any information, so he had literally just what he could see on the fucking screen. Mm. He obviously got told to tell people they'd have to get the the flight in the morning. That's you know, here's Which your is voucher, weird, right? Because that'd cost them more money, surely. Right, like it'd have to be cheaper for them to squeeze us on a fucking flight from Melbourne to Sydney than it would be to put us up in and a. This flight wasn't full that we were on. It was what three seats? <laughs> yeah, fucking four of them. Oh, They're right, all in the middle. <laughs> fucking terrible. Um, yeah. But then, we, so we land in Melbourne. Yeah. And I'm like, we've got to go. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, our flight leaves in like 30 minutes. Yeah. And you're like, no, no, it does it. It does it. You look at it. And you're like, ah, oh, no, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Because we were delayed leaving, weren't we? We were like 15 minute delayed leaving. I thought we had like nearly an hour yeah. we did not we had like uh, half an hour from the time we landed to yeah. change terminals from international to domestic yeah recheck our bags sorry get our go bags go through customs we had to go through customs first yeah then get our bags go through customs with our bags uh and then check our bags and then yeah go, go through, through security. security and then get to the gate uh we had yeah, 30 total minutes to do this so it's lucky that you know, I think most of the time people are pretty cool. Like people at airports know that shit is is going to go wrong. So yeah, no, we. I, I think if we were in the US, we wouldn't have made that flight. I think oh. they don't give a fuck. Yeah. I think yeah. it's because we were in Australia. They are just like, yeah, cool, just jump on through. Well, yeah, because they sent us through the uh, international passports line because there was no one in it. I'm like, hey, dude, we've only got half an hour to get our connected flight. Do you reckon we could just go through here? He's like. Oh, what kind of passport do you have? I'm like, an Australian one? He's like, ah, oh, just go through there. There's no one in line. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Get to the, the front of the desk and they're like, uh, why Like, why are you in this line? Uh, and I'm like, oh, the guy at the front said, you know, we've only got half an hour. And the guy who was doing my passport, it's like 25 minutes. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> fuck it. What kind of, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, okay. It's worse than I thought. Excellent. Yeah. And then, yeah, we had to go wait for our bags to come out. Somehow, they weren't that long to come out. They weren't, certainly weren't first, but yeah, we got our bags and then fucking somehow managed to make it. According to the check-in at the Melbourne Domestic, we were literally on the cutoff. Like, we were at the point where they would be like, no, you can't, you can't add any more. Like, you've missed this flight. Uh, so they managed to get us in, which is cool. And then, yeah. Yeah, because we got there and they were boarding. Yeah. Like, yeah, they were literally boarding. when Yeah, we were it still took another gate. 20 minutes from the finish. I don't know how, because we literally <laughs> fucking landed. Like, what, what was going on there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Anyway, that was fun. We made it. It was. All right. Should we do some news? Let's do some news. <laughs> what do we got? Our anthem. Anthem news. Act 1. Goals have been delayed. Um, it looks like they're putting a lot more focus onto bug fixing and 
that sort of stuff. Um, it looks like they've gone. All oh, right, everything we said in our roadmap that was going to happen uh, in the first three months of this game is not happening anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then you look at the fact that lead designers are being shifted over to Dragon Age 4. Uh, Anthem's dead. It's DOA. Uh, it's like, if, if you didn't already realize it was dead, they're literally killing it now. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is a shame for yeah, Luke, probably, because <laughs> poor Luke got paid so much money to, to love this game. Yeah, I know, right? And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's gone nowhere for him. <laughs> poor bastard. Yep. Um, I yeah. I was right all along. <laughs> uh, yeah, people lost their shit about it. Um, yeah. Hmm. I guess we'll see what else happens with it. I mean, maybe they do stick with it. They've just got a smaller team. Um, but it sounds like they're slowing things down on that quite a lot. It didn't go as successful as they thought it was going to be. No. No. Um, All right. Yeah. Next up, uh, trailers, movie trailers that we don't watch. I've not watched it. Job hasn't watched it. Or maybe you have. I haven't. Sonic the Hedgehog is getting a movie. Mm, Um, Shouldn't be. It has James Marston in it and Jim Carrey is playing Dr. Robotnik. I like James Marsden. Uh, so I. I like what Jim Carrey was before he became an anti-vaxxing weirdo. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll be okay. Do you like but, the look of Sonic, though, in this movie? I actually don't care. <laughs> Sonic died a long time ago, to joke. Sonic died a long time ago, <laughs> so it's not like he can make Sonic look good, because I'm so used to him looking bad. Like. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, they went for the realistic hedgehog look, which is pretty fucking weird because he's blue and yeah. uh, bi- bipedal. So yeah, going for you know an elongated face is a, it's it's a it's an odd choice, and the internet hasn't reacted well to it. And a bunch of people have sort of uh, like done their own versions. I love the idea that they're redesigning Sonic the Hedgehog. When's this fucking movie out? I don't know. Like, it's that's that's not just some shit you can do, right? Like, when the movie is ninety percent fucking CGI, like imagine if they were doing like fucking Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and they're like, "Nah, Roger Rabbit's ears are too long. You got to shorten those bastards." Uh, and so, like, just before the fucking film was seventh of November. Oh, uh, well, they got time. They got some time, but still, like, yeah. Oh, you got to shorten his fucking ears. Oh yeah, no worries. It's just. Fucking every frame of the fucking film has to be redrawn. Okay, then. Easy peasy. Mm. Um, yeah. My yes. favorite my favorite fix was the one where they gave him realistic hedgehog teeth, which are like little fucking tiny daggers. Um, that was That's probably the best one I've seen. Oh, no. Steve Buscemi eyes. That's the best fucking <laughs> fix I've seen. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's going to be a stupid fucking movie, so I don't care why. I don't know why people care. Yeah, but yeah. All right. Uh, Ghost Recon Wild Wildlands, the game of the year for twenty sixteen. Of course. That was that the Predator year. Um, or maybe this came out twenty seventeen. Can't remember. Predator year was the year after. Ah, so it was was last year. They're still releasing free content for this game. Um, this one is called Operation Oracle, and it's available right now. It's out as we're talking and it uh, for some reason is starring uh, John Berthnall Berenthal Berenthal is that how you say his name I thought it was Berenthal Berenthal I don't know I don't know um, yeah so what's it about because that's that's the Punisher right the new Punisher it's not Tom Jane Punisher even though Tom Jane Punisher is obviously the canonical Punisher the real Punisher the best Punisher really um oh. So yeah, he's not playing the Punisher, but it's him. Um, yeah. He's playing like a leader of, of an ops team. Right. Is that it? And, yeah, that's about as much as I know about it. Um, Forget what you know about your enemies and friends as you meet Cole D. Walker, a ghost team leader on the hunt for truth. That's weird. It's yeah, I, it's crazy how how long the tale in this game has been. Uh, I, you got to admire that at the very least. Mm. Uh, they've gone all out in keeping this game alive. Um, the Predator 
fucking mission was spectacular. I love the fuck out of it. Uh, and yeah, I probably won't play this because it's uninstalled and I'm not reinstalling it, but I love the idea that they're still doing it for people who do like repeatedly play Ghost Recon. It's got to be, it's got to represent some crazy fucking value. I mean, like Ubisoft's doing this sort of two to three year stint of a lot of their games. We saw it with Watch Dogs, The Division. Yeah. Um, Did Far Far Cry didn't get that? No. Assassin's Creed didn't really get that? It's interesting what games get it and what games don't. Yeah. um, Watch Dogs, Division. Is Watch Dogs Tom Clancy? Yeah. Oh, no. No, it's not. No? It's just Watch Dogs. uh, Yeah. That would have been an interesting trend if Tom Clancy games repeatedly got them. Got yeah, the that Splinter Cell button. stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. So, like, are they are they gearing up for a new... I think they're gearing up for a new Splinter Cell, but also, is there going to be a Wildlands announcement at, at Maybe. for next year? It wouldn't be the worst thing. If they're on this sort of trend of, like, Division, you know, Watch Dogs, because Watch Dogs is... Was that 2017 Watch Dogs 2? It's about yeah, that, yeah. Um, so we're probably gearing up for maybe another Watch Dogs, but maybe Watch Dogs is a next gen title, right? Um, maybe this one, this next Wildlands is same engine, but well, yeah. So the next Watch Dogs is supposed to be in London, right? So we know that much. I'm not sure. I believe so. I know nothing about it. Uh, uh, I'm speculating about Wildlands anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway. So I think I don't know. It's just a weird thing. Like, is is John a like leading up the new Wildlands game? Like, why is he in this DLC? It's that's what's weird. so weird about it. Yeah, it's odd. Um, unless they are like sort of gearing up towards the Wildlands to where he is a lead character in it or something like that. I don't know. It's it's really strange. Mm. Some of the stuff they're doing with this. Anyway. Um, I guess we'll find out more once it's <laughs> once it's announced or not announced, or if this is just a one-off weird thing that they're doing again. Mm. But we'll see. Uh, next piece of news is the last one we got here related to Rocket League, and the uh, the developers have been bought by Epic. Yeah, so uh, Rocket League's coming to the Epic Game Store, I guess. Um, I mostly chucked this one in because I've loved some of the reactions from pros uh fortnite pros who uh very famously loathe the way epic treats uh fortnite as a competitive game because they're prone to like making wild changes just before major tournaments yep. so uh yeah they've been dunking on epic on on how rocket league is now gonna introduce boats the day before the uh the world championships and shit like uh yeah, like just uh, going in. It's an interesting way to like the people who obviously uh, played at the highest level um, have such an interesting relationship with with Epic as a developer. Uh, but How long before the battle bus is like a vehicle in the oh, game? In a heartbeat. It's got to be <laughs> fucking moments, right? Like it's, it's probably already there. Uh, but yeah, no, it's. I, I, you know, congratulations to Sonics. Uh, I think this will actually be a good thing for Rocket League as a um, esports. Uh, objectively, I mean, the amount of money that they pour into this shit, um, the amount of money they have to pour into this kind of shit, uh, is epic. <laughs> um, so yeah, I. Uh, that's even worse. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a good thing. But yeah, the reactions from the pros have been pretty amusing. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's questions? it. Questions. April nine. That ain't it. Fucking hell. Johnny Park writes. Is it mate? Oh fuck! It is team. Johnny Park writes. Now that it appears that the next console generation will soon be upon us, what do you think are must-haves for each of the new consoles? And given the lessons from the current and previous generations, what should both Sony and Microsoft be avoiding? Uh, must-haves for the next console generation. SSD, I think is the main one. Uh, yeah, well, I guess, you know, PlayStation's been touting their crazy SSD technology. 
uh, that's faster than a PC. Um, it has to just be some sort of re-engineered motherboard with an extra PCIe slot, right? For some sort of super bandwidth um, M2 style SSD, right? Like that's my okay. best guess. Uh, Xbox has got to do something similar, obviously, uh, 100%. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know necessarily what they need to avoid. Uh, exorbitant Always prices. On. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be a good one. Um, you know, stupid fucking platform exclusivity uh, in terms of restricting crossplay is a good one that Sony could avoid. Um, that'd be a fucking top one to avoid. Uh, any games you think they absolutely have to come out with? I think Halo Infinite is a no-brainer for Microsoft. Yeah, uh, I'd love. I, I think just great games for Xbox, like full. Stop. Oh yeah, absolutely. They have to. They have to come out with some of the best shit to wash the stink of Xbox One's. Actually, Xbox One's library isn't bad. Its exclusive library is more misses than it is hits yeah. but it does have some fucking bangers uh we did see forza horizon really come into its own in the xbox one uh i think i would like to the point that i do think now that horizon is a better a significantly better experience a better forza experience than regular forza uh because regular forza doesn't really do doesn't know what it wants to do anymore um but yeah if you compare that to like how like when is sony fucked up here comes the plane again uh when is sony fucked up anytime they've teamed up with david cage and <laughs> day's gone like yeah there's there's nothing like the crackdown threes or yeah that that kind of stuff uh see thieves started off pretty rocky it did it's gotten extremely good but it is yes it's probably all we're going to talk about next week um yeah it might be uh what about i'd love to see a new dual shock um new controller yeah i'd love to see them do something like the hd rumble although i know nintendo has it painted it patented uh yeah i'd love to see him try to do something like that the other thing sorry go back to jewel, jewel shock before you, you skip past it go on do you think they get rid of the touchpad on the top whoa because there's not a lot of games use it days gone use it and i like it on that you do like it and i'm not sure why more devs don't do it yeah because basically what they do is they map it like swipe buttons to different menu settings so i swipe right, right to go to the menu sorry yep. to go to the main map or if I swipe left, it goes to my inventory or something like that. I think um, it doesn't get used because it's exclusive to the one platform, right? Sure, but if you're designing for a, a platform, put a fucking shortcut in there. Like, that's all this is doing is a shortcut yeah. to, um, you know, a different menu somewhere. Maybe it's not as e easy, uh, like, to map. I mean, maybe, but it's a swipe right and a swipe left and a swipe it, up. So, like, it, if they are to keep it, it might be really useful for them to make it easy to map to uh yeah. at the very least what's the deal with old controllers on newer systems do they work i've never tried that like can you use a dual shock 2 on a no. playstation 3 no no yeah i don't think so um what do they change i don't know man the, the probably the buttons the d-pad buttons are the next thing that needs to I reckon this index shit. Have you seen this Valve index shit? Yeah. Like the digital fucking representation of your digits. I think that'll be an interesting interesting next step. Mm. I'm not sure like not necessarily sure how useful it will be. Uh, but if we've got you know, triggers are such a they've so dramatically improved the way shooters feel on console, in my opinion, that I, I Driving would. Games? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd be interesting, but uh, that said, I don't want them to yeah wind up making waggle some all important thing. I think HD Rumble would be the the best thing for any of them because yeah. it is fucking fantastic. It's the best thing about the fucking Switch. 
um, the the Wii, the Joy Cons, or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anything else? Uh, I, I, Blu-ray player on both of them. 4K Blu-ray player, <laughs> 8K Blu-ray player, no, I suppose. I you're gonna need it at some point. Um, yeah, no, I think that's about it. Um, what about five G out of the box? That'd be doesn't interesting. It, doesn't the Pro use five G? Does it? I think it does. Yeah, I think I'm connected to five G. Oh, you connected to the high end Wi Fi? I'm talking about fucking mobile internet. All oh, right. So that's, that's where a lot of people are going for internet, and if they're going to want internet connectivity to be a significant portion of their, you know, yeah, the way they connect, like the, the way they, sorry, uh, DRM, then it would make sense. But at the same time, I mean, nobody's going to buy a SIM card specifically for their PlayStation. So, um, I wish my PlayStation didn't make as much noise. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna happen. No, it's only gonna get noisier. Yeah, probably. Uh, all right, Luke wants liquid cooling, um, <laughs> and hopefully for under about fifteen hundred dollars, I guess. Yeah, anything yeah. that's below that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I think uh, these are gonna be expensive. These things. I, I think we are looking at a expensive generation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good question, Johnny Park. Uh, that was. That was good to think about. Good stuff. Uh, excellent. That is it. That is it. Uh, the Gap, you can find us on iTunes, Android, Windows Store, uh, Spotify. I can't think of anywhere else, but there's, there's plenty of places on the internet you can find us. Are we on um, Google Playlists, podcasts, whatever the we? fuck it is. I don't know. I'm Maybe. asking. P- possibly. Uh, you can find us on The Gap, the GA Podcast. Search for us. Uh, we'll definitely come up somewhere. Um if you rate and review us, helps other people find the show. We appreciate people that do that. And uh, if you want to email us, you can do that at the GA podcast at gmail.com if you've got any questions. Otherwise, you can jump on to our Discord page, which is thegapodcast.com slash Discord. Uh, leaves questions. You can jump in, play video games, see your thieves this weekend. Sounds like oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Probably during the week. Um, still people playing Division 2, it looks like. I saw, saw them in there the other day. Wieners. Um... Apex Legends is still going as well, occasionally, now that we're back. Now that we're so back. We'll see. They haven't updated that game still. Fucking, that's what I, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about that. Fucking, I feel I bad. That. I feel bad. No. I feel I bad. I yep, I do. I do. I feel bad about our insistence that they push themselves uh, because if Don't the result... Push themselves. Well, I think they do. I think they do. Ch- changing Look, a fucking number in an INI file is not pushing yourself. That's but that there's more to it than just no, that. I can oh do it. my god! It'll take me ten minutes to fix some of these problems. The news that fucking Fortnite devs are, you know, non-stop crunch, makes me think that perhaps it's better. And I, I know that um, Respawn came out and said that they were going to wind back a bit and just, you know, stick to actual content release cycles for their updates mm. uh i'm about it i don't have to play the game all the time i can play of these um <laughs> so yeah but yeah no I, I don't i don't think non-stop crunch is healthy as that at all i don't think yeah and i think fortnite would be better served in hiring a fuck ton more people considering they're making billions of dollars uh i'm sure they could get away with it mm. um but yeah, instead they make people crunch, and I think that's kind of shit. We need to get away from crunch as a default state of being for game devs. All right. Well, if you want to be a baby, uh, you don't have to play <laughs> Apex. But if you want to be a man and come play Apex with Luke, you can do that. That, that is a channel. That is a fucking bold <laughs> fucking take on on what I just said. Ah, oh, classic, classic yeah. Luke. Classic fucking falls asleep at the drop of a hat on a fucking plane, Luke. I because I opened the Discord page today um, to check some stuff, and there was a lot of people talking about different things in there because we've been traveling a lot. I haven't had a chance to to see what's going on, but yeah, I'm not caught up yet. Yeah, there's there's some some discussions happening. Um, you can also find us on fa- uh, Facebook.com/slash GA Podcast, Twitter.com/slash GA Podcast. That's our social media stuff. 
if you want to go to our website, go to the gapodcast.com. We've got links to all of the things we just talked about, all of the, the shortcuts and, and buttons you can go check out, um, as well as past episodes of the show. You can go pull them up. And uh, that's all thanks to our Patreon members who support the hosting. If you want to help support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash GA podcast and subscribe. Smack that like button. You're the best. And thank you for doing that. No, but you. if you really want to go smack the like button, you go to the GA podcast.com slash YouTube. Ah. Uh, and smack that like button. Yes. Borderlands footage up this week on YouTube. Sure. If you want to check out me being awesome. Okay. Uh, if you want to check out Joe running into trees, you can go find that stuff somewhere. I haven't given you the footage, so I won't be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I've got some stuff in there. I'll try and edit it to make it look better because there's moments where it's me standing around not doing anything. And that's generally because we've gone for an interview yep. or something like that. Or I'm like reading text because yeah. <laughs> we've got not a lot of time. Um, no. Or me running an errand without any ammo trying to punch yeah, things nice that sounds fun so go check that out um otherwise i think that is it you got anything else you want to spruik where's all your content going this week redbull.com uh check it out i've got uh i have an interview with the chiefs for iem sydney i've got an interview with ben green from esl he's uh sam man the cast for overwatch contenders australia uh check that out it's that one's a com- comprehensive fucking interview. Uh, and Red Bull for my Borderlands 3 preview. Oh, the mask. Somebody stop me. Um, yeah. What about you, Luke? What do you got? Uh, Survivor.com. You know that. Check out my preview for Borderlands 3. I've got some interviews going out probably next week. So I've yep. got to transcribe all that stuff. Mm. Um, and I think that is about it that I can think of otherwise twitter.com slash Luke Laurie there you go Joby Jojo on Twitter I uh, I tweeted some epic some spectacular Borderlands 3 gameplay of me fiddling with fucking menus yeah have you changed your name to Auric yet oh uh, no no I didn't we didn't, we didn't explain, explain that Auric. we went to get our uh, the press packets uh, yeah. our press kits and our like uh, passes that get us into the event and stuff, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, they asked for my name, and somehow arrived at Ulrich. Somehow, and at this point, uh, I was I I was six beers deep, uh, so I pissed myself laughing. But on reflection, I think that probably would have made that dude feel pretty bad, and I regret it. But how the fuck, man? How the fuck do you get to Ulrich from Joe? He kind of just pulled it out and was like, eh? Eh? This one? Yeah. <laughs> this one? Like, <laughs> fucking wow, man. Yeah. Jesus. Like, he kind of just like flipped a coin and was like, oh, you, let's go you. This, this, might, this might work. He asked for my last name as well. Fucking hell. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's your boy Ulrich. <laughs> Off to play some Sea of Thieves. That's it. We'll be back next week. More Gap. Yep. Yeah. Bye.